All right. We're back again. It's Monday, August 7th. It's Chapo Trap House. Joining us today is the host of the Adam Friedland Show, Adam Friedland. Adam, welcome. Welcome back. Hello, my friends. Hello, my boys. Good to see you. Yeah, it's good, good to see you. Is us. it echoey? It sounds no, don't worry echoey. about it. <laughs> Fuck Matt, are you mad at me? I'll, if no, we if fine. we have to change <laughs> any more audio inputs, I will fucking kill every single person on this call and everyone listening. I'm not. I'm He'll do a psychic I'm, boom attack like a Pokemon. Well, I, I just I don't know. I miss my friends. I don't want to mess up the podcast. Uh, you, you, you miss us. You're doing you're doing psychic damage to us right now. You made me drive a mic to your house. It's a free episode. They can handle some reverb. What this happened? Is, Why are you guys in such a bad mood? Because the baseball <laughs> crank did something? <laughs> What's wrong? <laughs> Adam's doing diva-like behavior to us. That was, Adam, this is like... This is a common the theme situation. with you guys. No, it's not with... No, not with us. Oh. Not with us. This is... Uh, this has not happened to us. For people who don't know, we went through a battery of audio issues where Adam had to find several different inputs... And it gave us, it gave us. Will just signed on. Well, yeah, but oh like the pro- the problem wasn't. My point is, it gave us the experience of being on one of those podcasts that has twelve rotating hosts. Yes, you know it's fine though. It's in the past. If there's reverb, who cares? I think it's fine. It's for free listeners. I think it's fine. exactly. Yeah. No, I don't want to hear anything about audio ever again. <laughs> who fucking cares? Podcasts are bad. I don't listen to them. Exactly. <laughs> well, you're right. It's fine. Watch <laughs> sports, you fucking idiots. What's wrong with everyone? <laughs> Talking about Lacan or some shit. <laughs> Who's doing that? Well, you're, you're, it's good way. to see my boys. No, thank you. <laughs> Who's doing it? Who's talking about Lacan? I think the lady that played Mimi Bobek on Drew Carey Show. <laughs> 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 she has a she has a Lacan slut podcast. See, it's things like Lacan is really more of a YouTube philosopher. They don't really talk about him on podcasts. He was a YouTuber also? No, just like YouTubers love to talk about Lacan because you can use you can show pictures better to like uh Ooh, describe like the, the obscure object or whatever the fuck you're talking about. I don't even know what the fuck Lacan is, dude. I don't know anything. I just watch uh uh and just like that, the new Sex in the City. <laughs> Why'd they change the name? Because okay, don't get me started. I'm okay. First of all, now there are three. Because in real life, they were all mean to Samantha. But my understanding is she will be coming back this season. But in the last episode, guys, I'm, I'm a little bit tight about it. Because uh, she said that marrying Mr. Big, who dies in the series premiere, may have been a mistake. She gets back with Aiden, the woodworker, my least favorite Carrie boyfriend. Yeah, he was but broke. I could, and they're, do, they're doing the, they're doing this just because Chris Doth like committed all those assaults in real life. Who is that from Sex and the City? The guy, the guy who played, played Mr. Mr. Big. Big. Chris oh, Doth. he did. Yeah, I don't know. If, a, a former oh, that's Law right. and Order fame. Yeah. Oh, that's right. He did. It was kind of like, <laughs> you know a, I heard like it? a Seventh Heaven situation where it was a mo- yeah. They had, to, <laughs> they had a monster. Exactly. Did you know Chris Doth? I heard. Uh, the greatest rumor about him after the Me Too, he um, he would go to like Columbia undergrad hangout bars and he he would like pick up girls there, but he would never take them to his house. He would make them sign sign him into their dorms when he was like 53. He just maybe missed campus lifestyle. Ah, that's true. Learning is a lifelong process. Somebody should tell him that uh, that he is misspelling his own name. It's North, idiot. <laughs> yeah, what a what a dumb dumb. How are my boys? You guys are good. Mm. Yeah, we're doing. I'm doing good. Um, but I'm actually uh, going out to LA this week. I'm gonna I'm gonna That's be right, baby. the warm embrace of the boys by by week's end. I'm looking forward to that. But I'd like to kick off this show by referencing something that we talked about on the last episode, which uh, Felix was Felix was not on that show. Adam, you you were also not on that show. It was just me and Matt, and I felt that it was something that we were woefully. Um, unprepared and just really was not our lived experience to talk about. Um, I'm referring to, of course, comments made by Rudy Giuliani to uh, Paramour Noel Dunphy that um, Jewish men's cocks stop growing or indeed shrink after marriage because they don't use them, as opposed to Italian men's who gets bigger. 
I mean, what Rudy Giuliani is an expert. Go ahead. <laughs> Fucking idiot. Why would he be, be talking that way about us after everything we've done for him? Yeah, we we made after him. All the support. <laughs> we made him. He was going to be a one-term mayor until my dad made all those phone calls telling people not to go to work that day. <laughs> Right after I got home from camp. It's so sad. Like, I was like, we make a lot of jokes about 9-11, but like, I was, I have been thinking about it a lot, and it is really sad that a lot of Jews almost died. <laughs> they did not go. They had, yeah. they had to process so much trauma. Survivors. It go. is traumatic. There was like a near-death experience for pretty much every single Jew that worked in that building. <laughs> Think about, yeah, like now, now. It's like, you know, it's like how we look at the movie Sleepless in Seattle now. Now it's like, oh, you could you just fucking Google him. Oh, you could you could instant message him. But this was in the era of house phones. What if like your kid picked up the call telling you not to go to work and forgot to tell you? <laughs> that would be such a fu- like my kid especially. I would get so yeah. pissed off. I would curse his <laughs> that would name be terrible. as I was mad menning out of that bill. <laughs> <laughs> how did they get away with that intro? It's an absurd. It's a show about uh, selling cigarettes. And they're like, the intro is going to be the Muhammad Atta. And <laughs> oh, like the, the falling <laughs> man? Is- yeah, yeah. Why do they have 9 11 as their intro? I don't, I don't think that was literally that's direct 9/11. reference to 9 11. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's, th- that's the most, come on. It's, it was I thought after it was more 9/11. of a direct reference to the opening credits of <clears throat> Casino. Oh, where the car I, people, explodes? People, with, people, with, yeah, with the, the guy falling. And like you know, falling through all the neon uh-huh. and the, the the opera aria. Yeah, yeah. I, I people have been falling out of buildings for a really long time. I mean, before nine eleven, everyone thought about you know stockbrokers killing themselves. That's that true. Way. That's a classic move. Guy with a, a yeah. striped shirt and suspenders jumping off a building. Yeah, and just pancaking. Yeah, it was a big bummer for um, uh, Eric Clapton's son, who was at that point the most famous falling out of a building guy. And also a stockbroker, little known fact. Yes, he was, he was he a baby stockbroker. Down <laughs> huge in soy. That's why he had to end it all. Um, but yeah, so uh, Rudy Giuliani, Giuliani uh, slandering Giuliani. the Giuliani, uh, slandering the size and girth of Jewish men's um, cocks, but also said the parting of the Red Sea was not that big a deal because it's happened before. I'm just wondering. Uh, any for further thoughts on this slender from Rudy Giuliani? Yeah, it's, a, it's a made up story for babies. What are you <laughs> oh, Ooh. fucking Star Wars wasn't that big a deal. Oh, okay, congrats, Rudy. Oh, they could that be fake as hell? It's, for, it's a story for peasants. It's people that didn't have toilet paper. That they were telling a story about a tide. Probably, probably was a tide. Rudy's actually right. Yeah, I mean, like. Who's st- I'll let that one go. I'll let that one everyone, go. yeah, you know, everyone has their own theories. Like we don't even know what's in the Dead Sea Scrolls. It's whatever. It's like deleted scenes. The stuff from Neon it's Genesis like, um, Evangelion. Right, right. You know, you don't you don't know if it's supposed to be canon or not because they took it yeah. out. Maybe they didn't think it was good enough. But um, the cocks getting smaller is staying the same size because they never use them again after they get married. It's like I thought we went through all of this like six years ago during Me Too. <laughs> proving that a lot of Jewish men cheat on their wives so uh-huh. much that they end up on lists. Yeah, they lose their penises. <laughs> yeah. They, they lose Go their cocks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I hope I, well, I, I'll, I hope I'll find it. <laughs> did, did you check under the couch? <laughs> yeah. It's, so, yeah. It's a very ironic punishment. You lose your cock cheating on your wife, and she's the only one who can find it. For oh you. my god! I, I I would I'd be lost without her. I'd be lost. Yeah, yeah. But he's he's basically saying only Italian men cheat, which is just I don't. That's just not true. It's not true. I don't I don't necessarily take offense. Yeah, to has it. he heard of the French, for example? Yeah, but yeah, no, I I don't necessarily take offense. I just think he's woefully undereducated. I do have a friend who was uh he was Latin American. And his uncle took him to a house of uh, working women at like 13. And he swears that it was so traumatic that his penis stopped growing then. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Where are, the, are these and kids that like, had cool dads? His uncle where where was all the like, good dads out there? What the fuck? No, it I got, wasn't I got, cool. That's... He cried in front of, in front of uh, sec, well, uh, no disrespect la- him, but Panamanian sex workers. He cried. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I can imagine that I that would be like, kind of traumatizing, just, honestly. Yeah, of course. And then, and he claims his penis stopped growing. <laughs> it scared him. It turtled. It turtled into his body. 
<laughs> that's a that's a very Dr. Drewian analysis. Like whenever on Loveline, when a, a girl or would call and she had like a very like sort of baby voice, you'd be like instantly you go like, did you get molested when you were three? Because that's when your voice starts to you know, stop getting deeper because you're in that period forever. I feel like the thing of going to uh, see a sex worker when you're 13, I've heard I, the only people I've ever heard tell that story are Latin Americans. Yeah, I think it's part of like a male bravado kind of thing. Although my grandfather, they claim that he, it's family lore that also at 13. I mean, you do not want to be entering the eighth there. grade without having gotten, gotten pussy. I mean, so I, I think like there. the dad or the unk needs to t- take that, that mission upon him. Yeah, I Man think you up. have to go to the mine at that age. So it's, it's yeah. not that, that much of a stretch. Well, uh, moving on from uh, comments made on, <laughs> on, on last week's episode <laughs> about, about Jewish men and their penises, I'd like to um, turn Look now to... Look at Matt's to... face right now in this chat right now. <laughs> I don't like that. I don't like the way you're looking into the chat. <laughs> Matt, there have been many a time where I've been smile, like, sweetie, Matt, you're, smile. Not, you're not saying it, but I know what you're thinking about the, <laughs> the truth about the Jews. He's never yeah. said it out loud, but I I can just see on his face. <laughs> <laughs> the last time I've seen that face, the only other guy who made that face, Michael Richards, right before <laughs> at the Laugh Factory. <laughs> 60 years ago, we would have had mm. you as part of a IKEA piece of furniture. <laughs> Look, I have made my peace with the Jews, okay? Don't worry about it. What do you mean, made your peace? What was your war? <laughs> the Second World War? I mean, the fact that I'm fucking circumcised what, what, I for no good goddamn piece. reason. I'll, that's Where'd you make your piece, Yalta? <laughs> <laughs> I've made uh, my piece. I, I, but, but that, that's, I don't, okay, circumcision, <sighs> like, I don't agree with it, right? You know, I, 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 I've been on record about it many times, but like, that's, like ultimately, that's on your parents. No, absolutely. But you know, I no disagree. It's on your father. Them. It's on the father. And I, I, I'm only saying this because my girlfriend and I have been. I don't know. We're talking about the future and stuff, and she's like, she doesn't want it. And I'm like, why? I don't want that. I don't want him judging me with his gorgeous foreskin walking around my <laughs> so, house. So, so, so you like some sort of like yeah. D- Dominican farm system guy <laughs> with his beautiful cock. It should look. That is, it should be yeah. my call. And also, like, why is she saying that? She was on fucking, there was a Danish guy on study abroad that she'll be thinking about the rest of her life. That That is that is something I thought about because it's like, I used to think, like, no complicate, like, no debate. If I have a son, never, I'm never getting him circumcised. That's his call. But then I thought about the logistics of it. And it's like, who the fuck is going to teach him how to clean that thing? It's not going to be me. And if I, I did, no one, it's no one in my family. Felix, I'd, I'd be, I'd be happy to, I'd be happy to. <laughs> <laughs> We're both going to prison. We're both going to prison. If that happens. <laughs> hey, I invited my friend to come over and molest my son. <laughs> no, 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 I, I, I could just, it's something you can explain. The, the bris is kind of like, it's insane that my whole, my parents invited their friends and there was like catering there. Yeah. <laughs> like my, my grandma was watching it happen like my tiny cock like they, there was a deli tray <laughs> you gotta have a catered lunch it's not and a there was a fucking a old lunch. freak who's there was an old freak wizard what's that who's gonna come if there's no spread just to watch some kids get dick fucking dick get cut no thank they didn't you. even have any food yeah at least we saw a child's peen yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I will. At I least will. we saw the child's penis. You know what? I accept Th- it. There, it is I, absolutely on my dad. Who I had. I had. A, I had an older second. I had an older dad. Second family. Like he had a whole family with a wife, and then she fucking died on him. And then he was just like lonely, and he didn't want to do his own laundry, so he got married again. But his younger second wife, of course, wanted kids, and he's like, fine. So like by the time I was born, unlike his first family, like. By that point, oh, it's all the rage cutting kids' dicks off. We love it. It's it's the new scientific they, they don't cut it off, Matt. thing to do. And so a, when I got born, off. they're just like, hey, you know, there's this thing we do now to the dick. And he was just like looking up from a racing form, like, yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you have in the fifth? <laughs> I okay. I so Adam, you had whole religious ceremony with yours, right? 
Yeah. I it was beautiful. I remember it. <laughs> I hope there was a camcorder present. Oh my god, that's watch it. Better that's better though. Oh I yeah. Like, like I don't it's not it's not good because like then doing it in a medical my, environment yeah. where it's sterile. Yeah, that's what yeah, yeah. Did yeah, some fucking um a woman doctor just did mine in a secular environment. They let a girl do it to you? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and it's never been the same for me since. <laughs> okay. Uh, Wow. It, I, it's sort of all been downhill ever since. <laughs> yeah. You, now you're afraid of girls. I mean, yeah. Like the first well, time a, a girl touches your dick, part of it comes off in her hand. <laughs> no. The first time it touches a little form is your mom when you're being going out of the canal. Wait a minute, she grabs your dick on the way out? What are you talking about? What the fuck? (laughs) She pulls you out by the dick? Is that how it works in your family? (laughs) It's it's obviously going to touch her. She pulls you out by the cock? Passively, maybe. Not her hands, though. Yes, my mom was her own OBGYN, of course. (laughs) It's a family (laughs) tradition. (laughs) Uh... So what's up, guys? Uh, welcome to the, the the Sound of Freedom podcast hour. We've been <laughs> we've been funding child rescues. So what's the what's the baseball crank up to? Uh, baseball what crank is, is he's he's been cranking away. Um, he's just like he's in an impossible position now because he's like always been kind of like an anti-Trump conservative, but now he's in the position of being against the people who are against Trump, even though he is also against Trump. So he's sort of like. He's pro DeSantis, but he thinks Trump being or you know indicted arrested. Like a yeah. He's just friend. allergic yeah. to friends. He yeah. I, he, you can tell he that just, he's feeling a little un- insecure because he's punching to the right because uh, he's Antifa out of no just you know to like establish his his position. Like I'm not I'm not another <laughs> Trump guy, even though I agree with everything they say. He went out. He came out the other day and said, uh, "Jeffrey, by the way, uh, he, he actually he basically did a rose emoji post. He was like, uh, by the way." Uh, Jefferson Davis should have been hanged. I love what you guys do with your, your beautiful boys. Like the, these these freaks that you just keep. It's like it's like the reason you have Facebook is you just like watch freaks for like the kid that w- that said he was Wiccan in high school. I still look at what he does. What's he up to? But you do it is with these. Uh, you do it with bloggers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is he still Wiccan? That guy? He well, he in high school, he'd be like, I'm engaged. And we'd be like, no, no, you're not. He's like, I'm Wiccan and I'm engaged. And he used to have a bumper sticker that said, uh, don't make fun of dragons because you'll get burned or something. Oh, my God. <laughs> He's very happy. He's married. He is married. Was he on Was he on VampireFreaks.com? I don't think he was Vampire Style. I think he was Middle Earth Style. Yeah, yeah, but Vampire Freaks was like a catch-all for those types of people, even if they were not vampires. I love the idea of a Wiccan in Las Vegas. Good luck, dude. <laughs> Are you going to go like a little altered in front of... Uh, Neptune at the little animatronic thing at Caesar's Palace. Like, there's no, there's not even a tree to hug. Yeah, they worship the trees. Yeah, the, good luck. A wicked and, lo- and a female deity. Is that right? Yeah, you know, Lady Gaia, Luck. The whole deal. You know. Perfect for yeah, Vegas. Yeah, yeah. Gaia. Gaia. Female, female, female coded. A uh, wicked in Las Vegas is so much like an Israeli settler. Mm. <laughs> Just getting sunburned all day. Mm-hmm. Plucky, enterprising, <laughs> racist. <laughs> I, I I have thought that before, though, about all our guys. I, I think it's it's, it's something beautiful. It's like looking at your it. baseball ball card collection. When That's you go exactly back to your parents like. house, you go back and you're like, oh, let's see what what, uh, you know, let's see what what a Mariano Rivera is up to. These are all my little boys. And you're flipping through your book. It's nice. I admire it. That's why it was a compliment, honestly. Fournier and all your guys. Kevin McReynolds. The longer. <laughs> It's my favorite man. The longer you watch them, the harder the harder of a time you have, like you know, hating them as you use. No, you love them all now. You uh, almost all of them. Like I will say, Ross, I have this like kind of love for a lot of them, but the really there are some that are just like so repulsive that it never gets to that. Who's point. still like, bad? Like Stephen St- Stephen Crowder. Like, oh, he's terrible. That's the only one, it's one of the only ones where it's like the more we've taken in, the more I've hated him. It's not funny anymore. Well, there's just no humanity there. The thing with his wife, it's not funny anymore. Yeah. Well, like, okay, you but know, he, the, she's being abused. <laughs> that video is so sad. She's free now. It's fine. They divorced? She'll be fine. Going, yeah. They're, they're getting divorced. But like the, Who, the reason that you never get that. Felix, are you going to smash? 
<laughs> what does she look like? I don't know. Google, Google, real quick. This is a boy's Did chat. <laughs> This is all a right. boy's chat. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I'll, I'll, I'm sure I'll do she's it all right. I'll, I'll, I'll do. I'm sure she is. I'll do and it. You'll treat own her time. good. I mean, I won't treat her bad, but I won't. You're not uh, treat her Crowder style. I've never. No, I would never treat a woman Crowder style. But I'm not necessarily like a good partner. You know, give yourself some credit. You're not Crowder style. I would never say that, but I'm just. It's she more. It's sort, of the, it's, sort, it's sort. It's sort. It's sort of the opposite. <laughs> it's sort of the opposite. <laughs> I'm I I would say I'm like a Casey Anthony style boyfriend. (laughs) It's like I would never instruct I would never instruct a woman to to handle these harmful dog cancer pills. Uh But just by not paying attention to her, maybe she would touch them (laughs) to either get my attention or out of ignorance. Uh, that's, that's kind of how it is. Um, but I, uh, the, the reason that Crowder, just move never, back to New York, guys. This is the, this I'm, is the go, fu- I'm fucking going. This is the to, fun okay? we used to have. We used to have this fun. I'm fucking going to, to eventually. I'm going to fucking eventually. I am just, He's I had his uh, business. He's about you're, his you're business. Yelling, you're yelling at me. The man is about his business. Yeah, no, no, just move. I miss you. I miss you too. Well, you have to I go just, sell a cell phone accessories in, in Glendale. He'd be very good at it. <laughs> well, you have a kiosk? Oh no, you should have seen the one time I tried to do sales. <laughs> <laughs> when did you try to do sales? I it really didn't go well. It was one of the many jobs I had in Minnesota. What did you, you sell? At it? But uh, what did you sell? I, I I was trying to sell Primerica for like a day. What is that? Isn't that what it's like? It's, it's like it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pyramid scheme. Oh. and I I knew it was a pyramid scheme, but I was like. Maybe I could do this because I'm selling it to Gentiles and they're stupid, <laughs> but I'm, I was just too off putting and I quit after a day and I didn't make any money. I was like 22. Yeah, that's why Matt hates us <laughs> again, again, though. But it's like if you buy Primerica, it's your fault. What is it? They used to have a ballpark, didn't they? No, that's Comerica. Comerica. No, no, but there's also a Primerica ballpark. I don't think so because that is a fly by night <laughs> scam ass operation. I encountered them one time too. Yeah, there were never. There's a there's a, cri- there's there's a crypto crypto dot com, com arena. arena. <laughs> yeah, they fell through the cracks. Really, Primerica. It feels like they're yeah. sort of just lingering as a legacy operation. They're not cut of the edge scam yeah. anymore. Yeah. Will you used Wait. to work for Madoff? No, I didn't work for Madoff. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> you always told me you worked for Madoff. Shut the fuck How are we gonna be friends for eight years? You and I now find out you didn't work for Madoff. <laughs> Shut the, the fuck up, Adam. I'm sorry. I just miss you guys. <laughs> this is the fun I, we used to have. I'm, I'm, I'm fucking. I, I swear, to Felix. God, if you don't pay I attention to, to Adam, God. he's gonna touch the dog cancer pills and kill himself. <laughs> he's gonna no, eat them. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. T- I'm, I'm telling him I'm coming back. I'm making the Jewish. I'm, I'm making the Heshi Teshuitz hour. <laughs> it's so funny. I, Nick is the executive producer of the, the America's most Jewish product. <laughs> Well, you guys are like the only late night TV show in the game right now. You're this writer's strike continues forever. Really you guys are. are eating. I can't. I I hope one thousand years writer's strike <laughs> <laughs> and and SAG. Right. Did you guys do solidarity on the show? Like how so? With the strikes? How? What do you mean? You had guests talk about it. Yeah, yeah, we have. Who'd you have? Adam ruins everything. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Who's one of the leaders of the strikes? I saw him. No, I saw him speaking about the strikes. Adam, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm pointing a gun. I'm pointing a gun through my screen at your face. I'm, I'm reaching. I'm, I'm reaching through the screen. I'm, I'm, everyone's I'm responding to me like I, everything I'm saying is insane. What did I do? We, we have done. We have done. Um, there is content we have done and will do on the strikes. You did yeah. have Adam ruins everything. Is that no, why we you're did mad not have me? Adam ruins everything on? Uh, we t- I talked to a guy uh, who was a, a creator of a number, of, the creator of the Brotherhood TV show on Showtime and Rubicon on AMC. We had we had him on the top. Who? Marlon Wayans, so fucking yeah. good. <laughs> Marlon Wayans, I don't know. Oh, I, that's I, the Wayans brothers. <laughs> they would have treated Marlon Wayans terribly on Showtime's Brotherhood. Let me tell you. <laughs> There's a lot of racial tension on that show. Okay, sorry, I'm I'm knocking everything off course. I'm a bad guest. Adam is ruining everything currently. <laughs> I'm putting my feet on the ca- on the couch. I'm putting my <laughs> shoes on the couch. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm going to try to uh, okay, let's let's insert some let's insert some order to, to this tele- to this podcast television program podcast. Jesus Christ! Uh-huh. 
Okay, uh, Chris, uh, let, let's let, let's talk let's talk Donald Trump because he's been on fire this week. Let's talk let's talk let's talk uh, for number forty five. Let's bring up uh, the, the the clip we have queued up. So, you know, little things like your sink. You know, you buy a sink, and no water comes out because they have regulators on the water. Even if you're in a state where water comes out of heaven all day long, doesn't make any difference. Uh, when you take a shower, I like to have you know I have this gorgeous head of hair. I like. <laughs> When I take a shower, I want water to pour down on me. When you go into these new homes with showers, the water drips down slowly, slowly. You have suds, beautiful, nice, wonderful suds, a lot of money, Procter & Gamble, all that crap that they sell, say is good. Probably cost them, cost them about two cents and they sell it for $10. But you can't, it, it takes you 10 minutes to wash your hair. You know what you do? You just stay in the shower about 10 times longer than you would have. It's the same. You probably use more water. I broke all that up. Beautiful suds. How'd that happen so quickly? Like that really, that is some medieval, like that is some, you know, uh, the king has like cured my scrofula shit there. How did we go from wonderful, uh, you know, full strength showers under Trump to just boom, instantly Biden, he just pressed a button and all of the existing shower heads got bad. How did that happen? I have to say I have not had that problem. Um, yeah. Well, how many showers have you sampled? I mean, like, I don't know. My my, my shower is the water pressure is uh, pretty tight. You know, yeah, mine's it doesn't, fine. It doesn't take me ten minutes. Yeah, it doesn't take me ten minutes to wash my hair. I got yeah. get those beautiful suds all over. It me. takes just... him ten minutes to wash his hair because it is some sort of a monstrosity that involves like a side piece that goes down to his ass that he then has to spend like two hours in the morning whipping up like fucking cotton candy into a little circle to stay on. Of course, it fucking takes him that long to get his hair wet. The toilets, I agreed with him totally. The toilets are dog shit. Correct. We need industrial strength that. toilets. Let's do some desalinization or whatever the fuck and get some toilets that will actually flush something down a toilet. I've clogged two fucking toilets in two hotels in the past in two hotels? years. <laughs> that, <laughs> that, that shouldn't, shouldn't happen. That shouldn't happen. No. That shouldn't Whoops. happen. What they're doing with the toilets. If you, I've clogged the toilet, you know, when I was like uh, 260. Okay, that makes sense, right? But then I clogged the toilet when I was 195, which is incredible, like emaciated for me. That shouldn't no. happen. Something, it wasn't something like funny. A There's something funny fucking, going on. Yeah, it wasn't like a big fucking log. Wait, but Biden made it worse toilet? I mean, not yeah. Biden, but no, there, has been, there have been like flow reduction yeah. toilets introduced into yeah. the market oh, yeah, sort yeah. of as a counterpoint yeah. to, you know, like That's electric crap. and hybrid That's vehicles. The, and the, I, I was always, I'm, I'm MAGA on straws too. The straw thing drove, you know, drove me insane. That, there was the a while there insane. where they, everyone just decided overnight to switch to the cardboard straws and then it was, it was ridiculous. But I will a say a lot of places now have figured out how to do a non-plastic straw that will not like instantly melt as you drink out of it. Like the technology has progressed. But yeah, the, pla- the paper straws get more are water. unusable. It's a more efficient had- means of drinking. At the same time, though, yeah. I'm sorry, I know this is ableist, but if you have a problem with your straw, the solution is you just take up the beverage and you turn it to its side and put your mouth next to it. What the fuck is your problem? <laughs> no, get no way. Get- <laughs> Come on, dude. What if I'm lying in bed? What if I'm lying in bed? What do I do then? What about a fucking milkshake? Yeah, if you drink a milkshake, milkshake, how many milkshakes are you drinking? <laughs> One a, a day. Lot. Milkshakes? That's like Guys. a once every six months tr- fancy. Once trip every to the six diner. months? What are you, a <laughs> when fucking your family monk? tells you that <laughs> your parents tell you that they're getting divorced, that is when you should be drinking milkshakes. No, no. What? Once a month? You are in the global 0.1%. You have a milkshake once a year. I, I, yeah, maybe, I, maybe that's, like, you know, maybe two or three. I have ice cream a lot, but I, I don't know. Milkshakes. Just Matt, you're from the back. Midwest. You probably had them with every, uh, with dinner. No, we had night. milk with dinner. Thank you very much. A big old glass Disgusting. of 2% milk. These goys. Milk with dinner. Oh, I had milk, milk with dinner milk, every milk night. Milk was fine. Well, yeah, we, we did that yeah. in my household. You did? Yeah. Everyone gets a froggy throat. Not me. I'm normal, dude. No, 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 no. no. You, really. you, everyone gets, uh, sounds like snake. Sounds like Sounds like a you problem. problem. <laughs> Sounds like a skills issue. No, you get too you get too froggy. Not me, it. baby. I, I guys, I, I feel like we are at the Algonquin Round Table right now. <laughs> <laughs> milk, milk is the best thing to drink after you physically exert yourself. That's the other thing, and it's I I feel like it goes down 
it's more refreshing than water in a lot of ways. Matt, did you have it with ice? No, 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 no. Two percent milk just out of the fridge. Uh, oh, I, I, I never that, second guess. Huh? I never thought, why are we drinking this? It always just felt natural. You know, I'm from Wisconsin, the dairy state. It felt like it might even have been state mandated. And what did you have on the plate? Salisbury steak? You know, yeah. T- typical terrible food. <laughs> terrible, terrible Ameri- middle American cuisine. Which, like, that is one thing. America, people talk about everything's gotten worse in the last 40 years. And yes. But one thing that is absolutely the ca- uh, opposite is food. Restaurants are better. Yeah. Coffee has gotten coffee has gotten remarkably better. Yeah, well, and just what you what are you are likely to do? Restaurants what, what are better. You, what yeah. a, a random American is likely to cook for their family is also vastly better because yes, we're talking Salisbury steak, and most of all, the thing that was the bane of my goddamn existence was the fucking bush baked beans. Every other goddamn meal, some bush baked beans, and my stepmom would make me eat them, and I would just I would what I would do is I would stuff them in my mouth, and then I would take a big swig of the milk to like. <laughs> take it down like I'm taking pills. So that's why I have a, I, I could, as I got older, I was like, I'm leaving milk behind. Uh, bad associations, but yeah, refreshing. Well, I can't have it because it makes me I, crap my ass. I really understand <laughs> the rage of your people. <laughs> we 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 had milk with dinner while my mom was cooking restaurant quality meals. Wow, congratulations. Yeah, my parents were good cooks too. I imagine in the Midwest, everyone is just um sitting at a meal having Salisbury steak and saying thank you to each other, but not meaning it. Everyone's being polite, but in their mind, they're like, fuck you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Kind of. Uh, I, I, here, one of the things my mom would make uh, for the family, like for reunions and stuff, it was her specialty was uh, uh, pasta sauce. She'd make a big old spaghetti pot of spaghetti sauce. Uh, you know, the, the Sunday gravy, but uh, for her, the ingredients were like two big cans of Prego and then some paste uh, picante salsa. Salsa. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, I'm that would, be, me that, that would be the spaghetti yeah, sauce. Yeah, that's. You had salsa. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you had a hot Holy. salsa. It wasn't hot. hot. It hot was the salsa. medium <laughs> stuff or the mild stuff. It was mild. mostly yeah. sweet. Oh, is the thing, because those yeah, it's like bo- those, salsa's mostly sugar. The bottled yeah. ones, yeah. Hot like salsa. the Prego and the Ragu, are just like they, they zhuzh that shit up. It's basically cotton. It's, co- it's candy. Uh, but. Yeah, so, you know, she added some chunks for the from the uh, from the salsa. Oh, for texture. Yeah, exactly. Oh my. Yeah. You know, or, or then, but then my, uh, but then another oh, thing that would be made would be a, a, a meat. But yeah, but my stepmom had a, made a meat sauce for the for the for the noodles that was literally just like meat. There was no seasoning to it at all. It was it was like <laughs> just, just like loose hamburger meat sort of on. Because you yeah, guys are like, white it had, it had some sort of binding agent, but it did not have any uh, flavor. So it was just a hamburger helper. Well, we had that hamburger too, helper has got seasoning. That was good. Hamburger helper is not bad. That stuff was great. I was always happy. Yeah, that. that stuff is good. good. I've never had it. It's good. It helps the shit out of that hamburger. I'll tell you that. I used to go over to my Mormon friend's house and the, their moms would make hamburger helper and they used to have King's Hawaiian rolls. Ooh, well, those are, uh, King's Hawaiian those rolls are great. Are great. Yeah. Uh, those, those are, are fucking great. They're so good. Yeah. The Zesty so Italian good. was the hamburger helper of uh, choice for my family and I loved it. Oh, because if you're from the old country, mm-hmm. yes. And then when my and then sometimes uh, nobody wanted to cook the Hungry Man TV dinner, which is still in my mind some of the best fried chicken ever made by a human. It was like had something like five thousand percent of your daily sodium, uh, and then <laughs> these 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 pieces of chicken where it's like you bite into the uh, the fried crust and it would just like break off because it was like a half an inch thick. And of course, there'd be the little brownie. But you're absolutely right. Food, like restaurants, have gotten way better. Yes, they have. Food is way better. Yeah, I've yeah. been rewatching Seinfeld. the The restaurants and the meals they were having looked like shit. People have maybe go to a red sauce Italian place. Thai food barely Thai food came out like um, maybe three and a half years ago. Yeah, no, Thai food is insanely new. <laughs> that Thai insane. dropped three years ago. Yeah, <laughs> I feel now like everyone we're working. Has we're working with a bad sample size here. I we had all types of delicacies. We literally lived in Hyde Park. Get out of here. Yeah, the south side of Chicago. Me, Chief Keef, King Vaughn, Little Dirk. We were all eating Thai food. Yeah, we were all eating the best possible food. That's where the south started started in the eighties and then spread. (laughs) Like like uh, uh, ethnic cuisine as we know it is, and and like high dining were all invented in the go go eighties in the big cities. Not well, I wasn't from one of them, sir. We didn't. Have, we had like one Chinese buffet. That was it. The standardized Thai food menu at American Thai restaurants 
was imported by the monarchy of Thailand. Yeah, that's true. That's why they all have the same menus and they to promote uh, Thai cuisine. And Thai and Pad Thai. And I think it was in the nineties, probably. Yeah, hell of a job. Doing a hell, hell of a job. <laughs> Congratulations to the Thai royal family for their wonderful dishes. Shout out to the Thai. Thai, Thai pad Thai is not like a traditional ancient Thai dish. It's like a modern project, a uh, state building like project. In the 30s, the Thai dictator just said, We're getting, we need a national dish, and I don't want it to be fucking rice. So we got to get a noodle dish. Got the a noodles. national fucking dish, and we're going to call it after the country. And it's fucking Thai, Pad Thai, and you're eating it. Uh-huh. And now we all love it. It's right there in the name. Uh-huh. All right. Well, yeah, we got we, the the uh, people have said this before, and it is true. <laughs> These are all petering out. <laughs> uh, uh, the nicest, the nicest restaurant in my hometown is in like it had indirect lighting and uh, yeah. something like a leatherette banquette or something to you know something other than just fluorescence and uh, you know hardback chairs was the Pizza Hut. Yeah, Nick told me that he had neighbors across the street that would put on like ties. It and was stuff nice in there. They had the the the, the glass <laughs> chandeliers over your table. It was dark. Some of my earliest memories were the twilight of the quality pizza hut. Yeah, it got really bad once I turned like four. It was sad. It was very sad. Turning in my uh, my little book it report to get a free personal pan pizza. What was your? Would you, really, you turn in a book report to get a personal pan pizza? They had a liter. They had a literacy yeah, program. They were it. a lot like uh, Castro's Cuba, yeah. <laughs> or Krispy you know. Kreme donuts. Trying yeah. to trying to persuade the illiterate uh, slobs of the Midwest to fucking yeah. crack a book. And it was called Book It. It was and, just like Venezuela, yeah, where you, you know, read but you eat at, you eat rats. And if you wrote down during the during the, during the during the eighties when Daniel Ortega would visit. Uh, democratic lawmakers he went to one of those pizza huts and that is how he in- increased literacy it's true. in nicaragua <laughs> it was a bad idea though because you're telling the kids who are the, the kids who read are probably already the most uh the, the most indoorsy the least likely to get any exercise and you're shoving them full you're of pizza huts. fat you're plumping up the good boys yeah. crispy cream used to give you a donut for every a i remember i used to go with my report card hmm. i don't know what i'm really getting what i'm really getting matt from your tale, from your culinary tales, is World War One was just the worst thing to ever happen to you. People. <laughs> it was terrible. Like it really, you know, actual German food. It's not like the most, you know, bold, uh, flavorful thing ever, but it's good. You know, it's good. I would have you killed. It, you, are you telling me what I would have done for some Hassenpfeffer or a fucking uh, yeah. schnitzel as a child? Schnitzel, I would have yeah. been. A, it would have been amazing. Yeah. Yeah, no. Woodrow Wilson, Woodrow Wilson, who invented nationalism so it would lead to globalism. Mm-hmm. One, one of his worst crimes is what he did to you people. It's true. He wiped had a, out had a, all of our a, fun culture and our delicious foods. You had a great cuisine, and you know, look, look how it ended. Well, up. I mean, two parts of it got turned into the national cuisine. It was like the the Germans just said, "Okay, we're going to knock off on the German stuff. We're going to rename all the towns and stuff. Never mind it. We're just Americans now." But he, and here is a token of that. Here are our frankfurters and hamburgers, and you can enjoy them. And we can all enjoy them. But then that's it. Everything else just gone. I never had a pig knuckle. Those are good. Mm-hmm. Uh, those are really good. Matt, you're saying you wish you could be more German? I, I mean, you know, just uh, a little more texture than what we got. Mm. It's not It's it, uh, It's not an overall negative thing. We don't it's put sh- the same thing on the Japanese. And they were right there. Amazing with food. Exactly. They were right there with them. There's nothing wrong with being proud to be German. They did a lot of great stuff. They did some bad stuff. Everyone did. <laughs> Felix I, is I auditioning think should... for Richard Hananiya's new uh, op-ed spot. <laughs> <laughs> I just, no, I, this has always been my line on them, though. I think it's like you prevent Nazism by letting them be themselves. It's true. If we've got, yep. I mean, I would say that they are sort of, they're the, they're the premier white people, you know, and as a result, they did the best stuff and the worst stuff. They're really good at BDSM. When you're the number one <laughs> really among at- the whites, you're going to have the best and the worst record just because of, you know, the, the, so Matt, you're going on the record. Number one, whites, the jerk, the Aryan race, Luther Marx, but literally everyone in the 19th century, basically. No, the only real whites Beethoven. are Lithuanian Jews. <laughs> <laughs> The few of them that are left. And the the (laughs) Jews, the German Jews amongst the premier Jews. They're the worst ones. They're the worst ones. Robert Moses, he destroyed the city. There were some good ones. Yeah. 
Karl Marx? Yeah, Karl Marx. Mother, much motherfucker. What did he do? What, what was his vibe? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got, I got two yeah, more. I got no, two more see. Trump posts for you. I got two more Trump posts for you. Uh, I miss him so much. This is from. Uh, I mean, because like you know, he's been indicted. And um, I, I like the I always like when you can tell that he's actually writing the post because like we've talked about this before. You can tell the ones that are done by committee. And uh, the couple that he spit out this weekend was definitely the real McCoy. So the first was I purposely didn't comment on Nancy Pelosi's very weird story concerning her husband. But now I can because she said something about me with glee that was really quite vicious. I saw a scared puppy, she said, as she watched me on television like millions of others that didn't see that. I wasn't scared. Nevertheless, how mean a thing to say. She is a wicked witch whose husband's journey from hell starts and finishes with her. She is a sick and demented <laughs> psycho who will someday live in hell. <laughs> she is a sick... Okay. She is a sick and demented psycho who will one day live in hell. She is, will live in hell. She will one day that. live in hell. I love that because it sounds like it was translated from Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It sounds like a Buddhist curse. Yeah. Her, her husband's road to hell starts and begins with her. That is. He's only saying that because of the, he's good at the stock market, right? And well, yeah. And then the I whole, think no. He's he, he's referring to the hammer. The weird yeah. the hammer and the hammer incident. Well, Paul Pelosi. I don't know if you guys knew this, but he really knows how to pick up. Yeah, it's amazing. Over on Wall, yeah, yeah. one of the most talented yeah. to do it really of all how time. Does he, how does he do? It's it? amazing. It's like he's like a he's like a new Warren Buffett. Basically. He's like Nostradamus. Yeah. This guy and. Like both of these, um, like, you know, going at calling Pelosi a demented psycho. Trump is at his best when he's being bitchy about mm -hmm. ladies. And this next one is even is, is right up there. The shocking and totally unexpected loss by the U.S. women's soccer team to Sweden is fully emblematic of what is happening to our once great nation under crooked Joe Biden. Many of our players were openly hostile to America. No other country behaved in such a manner or even close. Woke equals failure. Nice shot, Megan. The USA is going to hell. MAGA. <laughs> <laughs> nice shot. So, nice shot, I Megan. Was, uh, You've damned us all. <laughs> women's soccer. Yeah. That's the funniest part about that. These guys, yeah. the people complaining about the woke, oh, the woke team, the woke team lost. It's like, I'm sorry. You are pretending to care about women's soccer. Wokeness is one. Wokeness is winning in your heart <laughs> yeah, yeah, every moment. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are you yeah. fucking kidding exactly. me? He's like, I want mean, the women's mean, soccer team to, to salute the flag. Like 10, 20 years ago, back when things were based, according to you, it was uh, no one who was not a woman and a specific kind of woman uh, cared about any woman's sport. And they made a big show about how much they didn't care about women's sports. And it's, they made an even bigger show about how much they didn't care about soccer. And now you're out here like, oh, no, oh, our, our, our ladies, they lost it on the pitch today. I'm gutted. <laughs> it was not, tears in my eyes, but it was not from a master class. It was from a master loss of pride uh, in America, which is in hell right now. The next pre uh, Republican presidential candidate, like after this cycle, will call Megan Rapinoe a white feminist. <laughs> <laughs> college, college comes for everyone. It's true. Enjoy your woman's soccer, guys. And defending uh, yeah. the citadel of masculinity. Rapino gave a really funny speech. I think during Obama, she gave a really funny speech after they won the World Cup where she was wasted. And it was like the closest to the Sam Hyde TED Talk uh, IRL that I've ever seen. She, it made no sense. It was, it was <laughs> meandering. It's very funny. You guys should watch it. Um, but yeah, like I, he, he's, you know, calling, calling Bette Midler a washed up psycho. Washed it's up, just, that was like during a hurricane or something. Like there was a national <laughs> yeah. disaster happening, so if I recall sick. correctly. Yeah. And he just stops um, to be like that washed up psycho Bette Midler. But it's just when he's being a catty bitch to other, other women, like, yeah, to other ladies. He's just a yeah. Jewish woman. He's just a Jewish he woman. He's a Jewish woman. It's true. Yeah. He's my yeah. grandmother. He's like, no one said thank you. No one, no, like, you know, just everyone wants me to die. You'll be so happy when I'm dead. They hate me. I did everything right. And they indicted me. When he talked to the, the football, the handsome football player part. Oh my God. The way, the way where he, the way that he was like, by the way, I bought all the food. Yep. You're welcome. And, and the way it was it like, is, yeah, these hands. These handsome football men, you know, someone should get them. I wish I was their agent. <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah. can't wait for their careers in the NFL. 
the, it's going to be so lucrative. You know, it's another thing in the uh, in the audio clip we played of him talking about the suds. This is another sort of like just sort of like tick that he does when he starts like riffing about stuff. He'll always like he, he brings up the Procter and Gamble company and he's always bringing up these like big, like proud American, like capitalist firms to just shit on their product. He's just being like, they sell that garbage. They, it's, it probably cost them two cents to make, but it's garbage. I'll buy it anyway. You know, with the Coca-Cola company, I'll keep drinking that garbage. He likes to, he likes to celebrate the greatness of American companies by pointing out what cheap shoddy products they all produce and how we all love them. We got to make them great again. We're going to fix it. We're going to bring back we're, folks. Dr. Gamble, we're going to bring back the satanic moon man on the packaging. We're going to do it. Adam, Adam, what do you, what do you make of all these indictments? You think, you think Trump's going to jail or you think he's going to get a skate off this one? Like he did everything else. I, I don't know. I just like, if I learn too much, then I have to talk longer on the phone when my dad. Is. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, you were telling me the other day that your parents are afraid of incels now. You said your parents and their no, friends. No, not my parents. Your, my aunt. Your my aunt, aunt. Okay, your aunt. Your relatives. This. Yeah. And then what, the guest we had last week, who's a legend. I mean, Will yeah. knows who it is. <laughs> yes, yeah, I do know. Um, he was talking. Yeah, he he mentioned incels too. They all there's. I don't know what it. I think there's something on liberal Facebook now that's the like incels are coming. No, it's so mean. No, my she's from America. Oh darn it. She, whatever. But um, but they think yeah that they're watching. Uh, cartoon pornography and it makes them uh, basically Al Qaeda. I mean, it's so mean that like the worst thing in the world is not getting pussy. The worst <laughs> thing true. in the world is true. not getting pussy. Yeah. And, then, and then they're making them out to be beyond like just losers. Then they're making them out to be fucking, yeah, Osama bin Laden. It's the meanest thing I can imagine. Yeah. Do you remember? Just be nice to these people. <laughs> They're, you, they don't get pussy. <laughs> they want it so bad. They're so lonely. They're so lonely and they can't get pussy. I don't know. It drives me insane. It's I, so mean. I don't know. I think I think the, like the current incel ideology is that they all claim that they don't want to get pussy because women are disgusting and that it's like that. Well, no, I mean, I, low, uh, that's the, 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 they want uh, pussy. Yeah, <laughs> they want pussy. Well, like okay, okay. It's like they, it's like the difference between like a big L libertarian versus a small L or whatever, right? You know, mm -hmm. there are a lot of involuntary celibates in this country, but maybe you're referring to the ones who self-label as incel, or maybe some of them who do. It's like, you know, it's like, it's, it's a pejorative. It's not an identity. It's not someone that's like, Oh, I listened to the incel podcast and I'm like, I got all the incel merch. Well, well, well it, it's, it's become uh, our, our merchandise it's is become available at shopathouse.com slash merchandise. Well, it's be, it's become one of those. And they get it, pussy, it, it, these guys. A right. lot. <laughs> well, it's become one of these like Americanized words where it's just like the way that like, um, you know, when you hear a politician talk anytime in the last 20 years, it's clear that they just take racist to mean bad. Yeah. Instead of it's like literal definition. It's the same thing. I heard someone call like the weekend an entitled incel, yeah. which is just like <laughs> what, what that's the like weekend? Not, what? Not right? The, that's, the, <laughs> what is wrong with the world? Somebody, was, somebody right. called Doja Cat's boyfriend an incel. It's like you only know who he is because he's fucking this woman. What are you talking no, about? It's a, yeah, so it's like a slur. It's like a pejorative now. Right. It's a pejorative where it's like okay, what you mean is like misogynist or yeah. sexist or something. But it's yes, like, that's what they mean. But but you're 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 saying incel because it's a word that you learned online mm -hmm. and it's a pejorative. It means you're not getting pussy. But it just like. I, I, this has been frustrating me for like five years. Do you remember when the Joker was coming out mm. and people were like, incels are going to oh, do God, that was so funny oh, because of it. God. One of the funniest it's one things of the ever. dumbest fucking things I, I've ever seen. No, it's yeah, just no, like it, they've learned words from social media, like TikTok, like gaslight. Privilege. Yeah. All, yeah, they, they have they, no everyone's meaning. fucking, everyone's gaslighting. Like, even, can I be honest with you guys? Autistic dropped five years ago. Now everything's <laughs> autistic. Yeah, yeah. Everything yeah. is what autistic. Is, how are you gonna, now? This guy. What about just being rude? <laughs> people are rude. Here's the thing. The new there thing are rude people. Oh, but oh, he's so autistic. I don't care. I'm not fucking. I'm not fucking Sigmund Freud. <laughs> You're just rude. Words gain like a stable <laughs> definition through repeated use in context. And that's the thing with, if it's online by definition, there is no context. It's just whatever you think it is. And so every word oh gets turned into, God. Ooh, that's a thing that means bad. I'm going to use that to sound smarter when saying what I wanted to say anyway. And all meaning gets annihilated. It's Pontypool, baby. 
Yeah, no, it's the the exact same thing is happening. Half the time, it's like people using it as a pejorative. The other half of the time, it's people using it as a self-ID, which is, I think, more the case that happened with autistic. People used autistic just to uh, a shorthand to show that they were really into something. They're really smart. Really watch out for me. The new thing is schizo. Yes. The new thing, <laughs> yeah. that, that is the most fucking irritating thing in the Wait, goddamn they see world. No, they're just like, oh, I'm a, I, I, I'm a schizo because I read the Wikipedia article for MK yeah. Ultra. Watch out for me. I'm like Ted Kaczynski. Yeah. You're not even annoying like a real mentally ill person. <laughs> You're an annoying in a different way. Yeah, I read a lot of posts and they made me go no, no, crazy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, schizo well, means schizo three, I'm really like, kooky. I've discovered demons are real through the Internet. And now, yeah. and, and I, yeah. I can see through their uh, their their illusions. Yeah, it's like yeah, people, it's just it's just you're annoying. Trying just to be- turn themselves into you know just through sheer repetitious belief, like I am I I'm touching the divine in my madness. But it's like all you're doing is looking at posts, man. That cannot ever translate to what you want it to do. Every self ID schizo is just they're an invader zim guy. <laughs> It's the same fucking thing. I am so fucking sick of it. Uh, you know what? You know what's another term that's like recently entered the vernacular, but has also like experienced like a rapid definitional creep, in my opinion. Uh, that's the phrase "the goat" to stand for greatest of all time. Have you guys noticed that? Like, yeah, well, when, when that's y- just fire. That, that's when, pretty, that's when, no, but like younger kids while. when they say like who the goat is, is term, the I, goat. I, I think they just mean this is my favorite of a particular thing, not the greatest of all time. Like. Adam, when I was watching the NBA draft, one of the uh, one of the guys getting drafted, they were like, oh, who do you think is the goat? And he said, like, to me, the goat is Paul George. And I was just like, wait a second. <laughs> Paul George is a good basketball player. But like, that's I, just you, a bad take. <laughs> that's just like, and I, it's I also think he just, just a kid to, like, that was born in uh, like 2013. <laughs> yeah, probably. Like, he's just yeah. like, uh, you can't blame him. He's uh, just a baby. He doesn't he doesn't know about when Jordan was play, playing against uh, truck drivers who played real defense. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, of course they don't know what it He's means. Playing against guys with CDLs. Because what is goat supposed to stand for? Uh, greatest of all time? What time? That is gone. Like uh, the past does not exist. If you did not directly experience it, it is not real. So the greatest of all I'm time just, just means instinctively the my favorite guy I saw. Yeah, it's just hyperbole. That's hyper. That's just yeah. what. That's that's nice, and it's also a compliment. Yeah, I'm it's- fine with people complimenting each other. Everything That's, is tearing each other down, and you are you, everyone is BP. Every girl has BPD, mm-hmm, and every guy is autistic one. nowadays. Yep. Maybe people are just nice to each other. There's some. <laughs> Don't ugh, with this crap. Watch sports. <laughs> be nice to your friends and your family. It's call, your mother, call your mother. Guys. Call your mother. Call your mother. Call your mother. Call your mother. She's, she's sitting there by the phone hey, right Mike. now. Just, just pause the show. Call your mom. Tell her you love her. <laughs> what? And then what? And then watch Sports Center. Or pardon the interruption. Have you been watching? It is what it is. Oh, the Cameron uh, fucking uh, podcast. The Cameron, the Cameron Mace Cameron. Sports Talk yeah, Show. Yeah, it's amazing. It's, it's fantastic. It's incredible. <laughs> <There's> a, <laughs> they're really. <laughs> I don't feel when Cameron like, called you uh, gay on Instagram. He called me gay on Instagram. Well, I, I think he said homie took it too far. But yeah. it was one of the finest, <laughs> one of the greatest moments of my life. A hero of mine. Yeah. He said, yeah, yeah. But, oh, they were like, um, I watched one the other day where there's a guy, Grady Dick, mm-hmm. that just got drafted uh, uh, by the Toronto Raptors. And Fat Joe tweeted, I like Dick from Kansas because he went to University of Kansas. <laughs> <laughs> and they were losing their minds. It's, 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 a, oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. I highly recommend that. No, I just I feel like I feel like it all just stems and you guys have probably talked about this on the show a lot, but like it just stems from fucking loneliness. People are so fucking yeah. lonely nowadays and they're trying to make like my friend's a middle school teacher. She said that kids are dumb now because they weren't at school for two years and they're weird. They don't like they, they weren't socialized. It's very sad. Well, yeah, yeah, younger people. And now they're not people, getting laid. Oh, well, I'll, I'll say like broadly under 30s. You know, it's like the way that a prisoner will uh, count every crack in the in the wall on their cell. Uh, when you're when you're lonely and there's uh, nothing to bounce your words or thoughts or feelings off of, and no tactile sensation or anything else, you put everything into categories. You uh, assign you assign everything to these uh, broad uh, words that have lost their definition. You 
organized little that you have. When when that Taylor Swift thing happened, which with, Taylor Swift with thing? us? Oh, with you, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the Matty Healy, Healy, Healy thing. The Matty right? Healy thing. I I I did I didn't pay any attention to it for like four months, right? And then I checked my mentions, and they were like, <laughs> they were they were literally like people were. Someone said that I will never know peace again. <laughs> They said, that's, <laughs> they said, you will never know peace again. You've never known peace like, to begin what? with. Yeah, what, I mean, whatever. I was like, what is this? What, why? I didn't understand. And then another girl said, I'm going to push you in front of a train. <laughs> and then, folks, boys, lads, even Adolf Hitler had the class to put us on the train, okay? <laughs> okay? And this this child wants to push. So I called my sister and I was like, what's going on? And she's like, okay, I've been waiting for you for this phone call. And so she explained it to me and she was like, Taylor Swift is making all of her albums over again because Scooter Braun owned her masters yeah. or something. So now her fans, I guess all of her albums are about different breakups, right? So now her fans are having to relive the traumas of all of those breakups all over again. But this time they're worse. Right. And I was like, what the fuck does that mean? (laughs) What does that mean? And then, but it makes me really sad. Like people are so lonely that this is like their cause or something. This is like, like their like civil rights movement or something. This is a tour. Adam, Adam, I heard a, uh, I heard tales once of in Saudi Arabia, like uh, middle class and higher women who um, would just have to stay inside all day unless they had a male guardian to go outside with them. And even then, once they were able to start watching South Korean soap operas, uh, they would get so invested in them uh, that they would like attempt suicide because of the overwhelming rush of emotion in the void of nothingness. Similar type of thing. Not as dramatic for us. <laughs> well, yeah, it's a, same type it's, of idea though. It's energy that is no, has nowhere else to express itself. And it's, and this is, this is the only real spot, the only area where you are allowed to really go crazy like that. Cause everywhere else it will get you like locked up or something. No, far be it for me to, to tell you guys your crap, but it's just that the, the economy doesn't have jobs for it everyone now. Well, see this is why i was people saying just that, the economy doesn't have enough jobs to absorb that but that's people and so therefore they're they're pushed out and they're alienated there's this push to uh have kids do go back to work you know like sarah Huck- huckabee sanders just signed a bill into law allowing more child labor uh in arkansas and she's just smiling there at a table with these little kids in suits who look like they're about to be executed uh, yeah. And I think that that is, of course, bullshit. But I do think that there should be like a, a I mean, if, if you want to address that issue of getting people to do some meaningful activity that brings them together, then, you know, turning education into an applied process where you're like brought together with other kids, maybe from other places and brought around a project to accomplish at your level of skill. And in so doing, uh-huh. learn to do another level of skill and then, you know, be integrated into a social order instead of, yes, what we do now, just expect people to sit in front of their computers all day and then say, OK, now be in a human being. Good luck. So you like you think they should go to the triangle shirt waist? No, factory? no, 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 not <laughs> shirt waist in, a, in, a, in that kind of conditions. Like there's a lot of work that needs to be done. You know, Matt, no, no, I agree. I, 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 the, I, the, fact, the, the fact that they're not even fucking each other anymore. Yeah. Right. That's not good. Yeah. Like, like fucking someone, like going out and meeting someone and, and, and hooking up with them implies that you feel like you're part of a community at least. Right. Yeah. Well, like yeah. there is like some sort of like social kind of uh, like you, understanding. You there, have enough right? trust well, well, that, you know, that I could go out there and I can try to interact with somebody and it'll be it might be embarrassing, but it could also be really good. I think now people in their minds can only imagine bad outcomes from interactions with anybody who they don't know very, very well. And as a result, it's much safer to just pour all that energy into the fucking computer and just thwart it and and tie it off from into uh, pushing me in front of a train. (laughs) Well, well, (laughs) what you said, what you said about like what you said about like um, they're not being enough jobs to fill the space. I mean, 
there are plenty of jobs, but there aren't plenty of jobs that are that allow you to be a not invisible person. Yeah. There are yeah. more jobs than ever since at least since like, you know, 1900 where you are a totally invisible person, where you are a door dasher or you, uh, you know, sanitize the aisles and CVS. You were a yeah. person that those with jobs that make them a real person in our world just look over you, uh, do not acknowledge yeah. you. Uh, and coincidentally, a lot of those invisible person jobs are jobs that abrogate a lot of the uh, the, the filler space in our life where we would previously go out and engage with people. You don't even, you don't even go to the restaurant to pick up your food anymore. That's for someone else. They leave it at your door. You only see their name, uh, on the little notification. Uh, there are a billion fucking jobs like that, that prevent you from ever seeing anyone and engaging with them. Yeah. I, I will say, um, when I saw the, uh, the, the controversy this week over that Richard Benny Hanna guy and all of his like, you know, uh, sort of, race realism uh past blog posting the uh, leaving all that aside his comment that he was a too high iq to work at mcdonald's <laughs> uh when i read that i was like we need to have a so we need to bring back selective service like we need to have a universal draft of 18 year olds in this country but to do four years in the service industry because like that is the yeah. modern day equivalent of the sum or verdun or something <laughs> is dealing yeah. with the human wave attacks of uh, the american <laughs> consumer <laughs> Yeah, being just humiliated and prostrated before the demand. and like I, I think it would straighten a lot of these fucking a lot of these BPD schizo autistic bums out. Yeah, you know, just do your time doing a fucking shitty dead end job, and maybe like you'll connect with some people or regain some of your own humanity and get a little humble for Christ's sake. Yeah, some humility. We'd all use that, yeah. Jesus Christ. Or we could just go to the war like our grandfather. I mean, that is the ult that's the ultimate way out. That's that used to just be stealth, what a guy uh, did. You go there. to the war. That doesn't work. <laughs> that doesn't. That doesn't even work. That doesn't even work we anymore. We don't have to do that shit anymore. But like that doesn't even work anymore. Have you met people who've gone to the war? They're just as bad. No, I mean, of course. Yeah, they're all selling books. But that's just it. It's not the same thing. It's not the war anymore. It's just a bunch of theaters. Hey, right. The guys from my high school, a lot. Yeah. They're all like kids that like did men. It's a bunch of theaters of action. And it's not, and it's not, uh, it's, it's, it's selective. People join. So it's, it, it is not a collective experience. So it can't be the war for anybody. Yeah. Like even like going into comedy is, it's just pathetic. Like I, my, my dad just came to visit. And I was like, I had this talk with him like 12 years ago where I was like, this is my calling and I found my thing and all this crap. And I'm like, dad, I apologize. Like that must have driven you insane for your son to be like, I'm a clown. This is my identity. I'm coming out to you as a clown. Previously, you just had to be the, the wise guy in your unit in Korea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you know, uh, like yeah, the, you know, the one you're cracking the wise cracking kid, Kassel Moskowitz. You, this guy yeah. Moskowitz, he he was uh, <laughs> no, there's like a my girlfriend's grandfather went to art school, and he went to Korea, and there's a really cool picture of him, like he painted a nativity scene for uh for his unit because it was Christmas, right? And so that's, I mean. He wasn't like, oh, I, I need to go to NYU. You yeah. know, like he wasn't yelling no, at I his parents. To, I just have to kill like a third of this country. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, no, I mean, like, you know, I, yeah, it wasn't like, um, uh, yeah, of course. I'm not advocating that war is good. But maybe. <laughs> maybe, well, I mean, maybe. Like, that's how I, I'm imagining. <laughs> is it? When I is imagine it? like national service, you know. Uh, General Matt, that would be so sick. General who? Matt. Matt. You. Yeah. Oh my God! You'd be I incredible be at troop I, movements no, I could never, and no. resupplies. No, I'm a Libra. I can't make decisions. Not going to happen. I, I could not. What did be you say? Deciding Libra? when when to attack and, and what direction? <laughs> you said to Libra. Do it. No, thank you. Get all angry. Why did you move to L.A.? You say Libra. I know I'm a Libra. For a serious, <laughs> cool <laughs> question <laughs> like that. <laughs> For a cool question like that about you, about you, uh, fucking being with a uh, general, fucking uh, Monty. Uh, planning D Day. No, I could no. And you're like, oh, I'm too much of a Gemini for. This. Shut up, man. <laughs> I mean, that, that, just move back to New York. That is, Why do you go I'm not there? I'm saying I wouldn't kill anybody. I'm saying I would be I'm very too bad much of at a Libra. Decisions. 
I that used is, to know a king. I used to know a titan. <laughs> that is, you were a thousand feet tall. <laughs> in Matt's in Matt's defense, Monty and Eisenhower and MacArthur would also have said that. <laughs> yeah. Being leaders, they were very no. Brutal. Monty was Monty was BPD for real. That's true. He did. They all were. They all were. It used to be if you were a man's man, if you were Andrew Tate, you went into fucking musical theater. And if you were a big fucking fruitcake, you were a general. <laughs> Monty. <laughs> all right, fine. I'll be a I'm a Yankee doodle dandy. <laughs> as long as I can get ivory handled 45. Hello, boys. <laughs> and there'd be, uh, there'd be articles written where it's like, is George Gershwin a toxic influence on, on newsboys? <laughs> And then the, the corresponding article in the fashion section, General Patton unveils new epaulets and golden helmet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fabulous. Matt, what's your favorite war? The U.S. Civil. It's always going to be my boy. Number one. Number one so war. That's crazy. the one I started with. It's, it's, I think that was my, no, that was my first two. For real. Yeah, you always love your first. It was crazy. Yeah, it's nuts. So sick. <laughs> Anyone here? Anyone here? Any here and and eat them. Yeah, I was. I was. I was oh, yeah. fucking wild. Bloodiest day, baby. Wild. Yeah. Anyone rock with the uh, Russo-Japanese war like I do? I mean, oh, yeah. what a weeb. We fucking weeb was, over here. I, I fuck with U.S. wars. They fucking own. They fucking own. <laughs> they did own the shit Russia. out of Russia. Yeah. Fuck that entire part of the world. <laughs> Japan rocks, except for a few things that they did. It is kind <laughs> of the BP. It is kind of the BPDs versus the toxic Russo-Japanese. If you want to versus the autistic. Sorry. That that yeah. war is very funny. The because- Russo BPD, the Japanese uh, autist. You know what the Japanese? Well, not all Japanese. Mm-hmm. Chinese and Japanese Buddhists, they say. I say they're they different. different. Okay, they're different. What? I, I, you I say didn't say like they're the same. Chinese, Japanese, same thing. I said that <laughs> both of them have a belief that's similar to this, where no one is innately born with a soul, like we say in our Judeo Christian tradition. Uh, you, your identity is a combination of social, economic, and historical factors. But if you want, you could create a soul over time, like your own science project, you know, in the words of our friend Sean Moorhead. And maybe that's the answer to, to all. This. Yeah, we have we have to be able to make a project out of our souls. And we currently are not allowed to do that. It is literally priced out of the marketplace. And everyone is creating these dark, twisted, uh, pathological, uh, reactive souls just because it's the only space they can actually do so because pathology could be endlessly absorbed by the system and and monetized you could do it if you're upper middle class well yeah of course money allows you to do anything but like it but the thing is even in the context that you live in as somebody who is like higher up makes it harder to even do that because you have to deal with everybody else who's constantly miserable and has been turned into a fucking meat puppet and it confronts every day with dead fucking eyes. Yeah, but at the end of the day, you got you. Mm-hmm. And me, you know, I'm like halfway there getting my soul. You beat Zelda or no? I, I don't support fuck Nintendo. I don't support them at all. Fuck them. Why? Be because Eight of the World War Jet? Because of Pearl Harbor? No, 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 no. I support mostly Japanese game studios and uh, publishers. I hate Nintendo because of their litigiousness and... Uh, animosity towards modding why you got sued by pikachu <laughs> no i never did they would never do you think they would ever try that yeah. on me so the best lawyer in japan would get beaten by a half jewish paralegal <laughs> i've never I been, been to law school i would take on the greatest lawyer that country's ever produced <laughs> they're good at a lot of things but i would fucking destroy them at law yeah they would not touch me ace attorney yeah yeah they tried to make a video game about being an attorney in Nintendo. They really don't get it. It does make, I, I, but, I think you're right because I'm pretty sure that um, almost every Japanese legal case is settled by everyone getting in a room and just politely nodding at each other, you know, just like a little doing little bows. You went in there yeah. and you're like, actually, just open your mouth. They would just be stunned. You'd destroy them. Yeah. yeah you no, would go yeah. in Johnny Cochran razzle dazzle style. You'd be making things rhyme. The streets would not be ready. Yeah. Yeah, they're also, okay, you called me a weeb, but in Japan, a lot of Japanese people are weebs for Judaism. <laughs> That's true. That's what true. I'm not, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. They, um, 
Well, everyone, I've told this story a billion times on the show, but when Nazi Germany and uh, Imperial Japan were allied, they mm-hmm. sent in Japan protocols of the elders of Zion in Japan because they had no like historical animosity or really contact with any Jews. They read it and were like, these people are fucking awesome. And yeah, most, a lot even, of people think that, actually. Yeah, but even after most that, Most people though, think Jews are pretty cool. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> not speaking for myself. Yeah, yeah, Matt, what is the face? Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Why yeah. with your face like yeah, every time I open okay, my yeah. mouth in yeah. the middle yeah, east? We didn't, yeah, we didn't put the fucking corn syrup in your pasta sauce. Oh my god, you have hot <laughs> salsa Wilson. for dinner. Woodrow Wilson, not you us. People. <laughs> yeah, but it, but that they, if you play any uh, Japanese game, tons of Jewish things pop up. Shabriri, the Hebrew demon of blindness. You know, there's a Pokemon called Golem. There's just they love uh-huh. Dibix. They love all our monsters. They they they, they, they re- they're really into it, and it makes me feel better about be- me being into their stuff because there's an exchange. No one has a current account <laughs> deficit. It's equal trade. Well, like they have their native, Whoa. like they've got their <laughs> spooks and goblins and ghouls <laughs> that they have. And they like them all. And so they can accommodate really any other religious tradition that's heavy on little guys, little goblins running around. And they're yeah. like, oh, yeah, like, yeah. like we got. Yeah. That is one thing Christianity, it really does suffer for lacking. Even Islam has got jinn. Like what? Angels and devils or whatever. They either possess people or they like just watch you from a cloud. There's like nobody like running around. Nobody you're going to meet like going to the park. In Christianity, Wait, in, in what in in, in Christian? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know, just Jesus Christ when he's been resurrected in post like eighteen hundreds Christianity. Yeah, but like, oh yeah, medieval Christianity was great. They do. They really, they really tried a bunch of interesting things with Christianity. They really tried spicing it up. But ultimately, Jewish John Calvin, the lawyer, <laughs> was like, "Hey, it is silly seeds, it's over. You know, <laughs> you're you're either on the list or you're not." And you are not going to meet a scary little devil in the park. I mean, I, I don't even know what we're talking about anymore. But I think most people think Jews are really awesome and pretty funny and handsome, cute. There are a lot of people who don't like Jews, but in America. <laughs> they're very popular in America, for sure. No, America's, no, no. The, America's the best place no, for us. No, no, no. Ever. The Metagon, the Metagon don't want us. Don't forget <laughs> that. Fu- oh, shut my, the fuck oh up. my god. Shut up. The Metagon don't want us. Shut up. Shut up. We're like we're like above white people. We're above like regular white people in this country. It's, it's so amazing. crazy. I mean, I Dinesh get... D'Souza is really popular. This is none of this is going on, on in the pod. I can tell you Chris is Xing this. He's like, we're going to be yeah. on post left watch with this. <laughs> we got to wrap it up. We got to wrap it up. We got to put a pin in it for this for today. Uh, Guys, thanks for having me. We're, we're, uh, the, Thank you. Our Canada show is almost totally sold out, but hey, why not? Chopotraphouse.com slash tour. We'll be in Toronto and Montreal August 17th and 19th. Hope to see you there. Live. Oh, so Chopotraphouse.com slash live. Sorry. Chopotraphouse.com slash live. Um, but yeah. Adam, thank you so much for coming on the show. And congratulations so much on the Adam Friedland show. Uh, Guys, subscribe to Taps on YouTube. Subscribe on Patreon. We are an independent production. We appreciate all the help we we can get. Unironically, and I've said it before, the Adam Friedland show is the most interesting and funny and like genuinely innovative thing I've seen with We're, podcasts. They, I, I just want the boys to like it. Yeah, I don't no. care about these pigs out there in the world, but if the boys, if you say that, that makes me feel fantastic. I really mean I, th- I think, no, it's fucking incredible. Yeah. It really is. We I, worked on that, I, on that dance for four weeks. It's the hardest we've ever tried at anything. And it all paid off. Uh, not yet. Well, well it was a good tell. dance. Eventually. Yeah. Eventually, I'm going to get Tucker goddamn uh, uh, Carlson on there. Yeah, that'll happen I'm for sure. Tell him what's what? He'll do that. No question. I really, I'm my two biggest I want are Dolezal and Hunter. <laughs> I, th- I think Dolezal's that Dolezal's cool. gettable. Well, Hunter's going to be a problem. She's misunderstood. People are so mean to her. I think Hunter I would say yes, but like he would get like trank darted and dragged to promises yeah, Malibu would, yeah. immediately on the way to the fucking uh, <laughs> WTF <laughs> Mark Marin. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Okay. Mark, yeah, bye but bye. that's like that's like in- bye bye. Bye. 
Thanks, guys. Mark Barron, Thank softball you, Adam. artist. Thanks, Adam. <laughs>